It is another day in the shop here, and we have made some great progress. So, if I come over here, I have all of the blocks glued up, and this is on the back side of the mold here, um, and they are all flush with this back side. Now, I've marked out where we are cutting the corner and end blocks to, and the beauty of having this template out of acrylic is I can see can just line up the center line, you see the two of them there, and just line it up and I know that I am accurate. And of course, I also have these two pins here. Mm, very good. So, we have that. I have something exciting as well. This is the cherry that's going to be on the back plate. You see, I already have my center line marked out. And I think this is yeah, so this is the right direction. You want the, the grain to be swooping this way relative to, to where the curve is. So the grain is like this, the annual rings are like this, and the arch of the violin is like this. So this is our top, our, our back. That's looking nice. And I believe I already showed the spruce is glued up right there. So everything's looking good. Um, I also... Give me a moment and I'll show you the ribs. All right, so among this mess of cuts, we made a, a whole bunch of different ribs. I realized the initial piece that I was considering, which I believe is this guy, I mean, he's obviously too thick, but more importantly, the grain just isn't right. We can look at that here. Even through the saw marks, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, we don't want... Oh, focus. We don't want the uh, the grain to be running like that. We want our grain to be running as parallel to the long sides as possible. So that means we don't want to see many much of the, the, the annual rings. Pardon that motorcycle. So here, this is this is what we're looking for. Really, this is for the most part nice. Down here is where it gets you get to see more of those, and I'll just avoid that but I have this nice long piece again we have this huge quantity of cherry we actually have another cherry table gluing up here um, we, had, we made one in our dining room and we are gluing up another one to complement that as a there's a secondary table in the dining room um, that my mother uses for her guitar stuff so anyways beside the point so we got a, I got a nice cut off from that and then there's some other cherry scraps in here that I, I have a selection of to make the neck from. So that's all of our cherry. And these ribs are currently at about a one and a half millimeters thick. And I will probably scrape it down um, to the rest. And then I'll uh, make my cuts on it. Honestly, it's so thin, I could just slice it with a pair of scissors, and then I'll scissor off my, uh, my pieces. So, all right, I'll see you when we're getting those bent. Another day in the shop. I had my wisdom teeth pulled yesterday, so we're, we have a nice little break here where I can work on the violin. I have my cherry ribs cut. This one has been thickness down to, oh, just a hair over a millimeter. Um... And it's just a couple of centimeters longer on either end because uh, I've been clamping down the ends so I'm not able to thickness those quite as well. Um, these are for our two C bouts and then this is for the top. So I still have to thickness these guys. In the meantime we'll notice something very sad. Um, the uh, uh, top block, a little bit of dust on my hand, uh, had uh, come off. I was trying to get a nice flat surface before I put on the ribs um, and he just popped off uh, all the other guys have been holding steady I, I mean I've had to replace two or three now um, again with the C being completely replaced so you know not ideal but uh, we'll make do so as that guy's drying I'll be thicknessing these guys and then they'll still be a little bit longer to wait on him but in the meantime I'm gonna end up going to Harbor Freight to buy uh, some more of these clamps. Probably not this specific model. I don't think I looked online. They don't have this exactly, but another four inch uh, clamp like this. So I'll see you when we make more progress. Um, one of my problems is that there's a varying amount of heat on this depending on where I'm at. So down here, the water just skates right off. 
um, I've cooled it down enough spraying it with that water but over here you know it, it stays so I need to be uh, pretty close to this end here uh, but then I also have hot air blowing through that gap I might need to rethink my setup but we'll see. oh I got that a little wet we'll, we'll see when I spray that and uh, try to get this bent here all right it has been a while but we finally got this thing clamped up so I have these uh, little outside parts of our mold to help me clamp it up um, we have a relatively nice fit up, but it's still not perfectly touching them. Hoping that will be fine. It's still pretty darn close, and if you'll focus down here. The bottom bounce aren't that bad. Their radius is a lot um, less, uh, but it's the top bounce, especially near the top and the bottom, um, that are uh, in the most trouble. So. Let me actually hold this guy here. He, I, he's just setting up. Um, literally just put him on. Maybe if I give him a little bit of force there, he'll hold on. But yeah, there we go. And then over here, ooh, rolling around. I've got the general shape of the top out, but uh, it's a little bit hard to get that until I get these guys uh shaped up on the end and tapered so uh kind of cut it close with the amount i had you know this is what i shaped i also had a crack whoop no no there we go a little crack there uh which i healed with some uh ca glue so i'm hoping uh that's not going to give us a problem um so th yeah there we go um uh, that's about as that's much as I can do for it. So I'm gonna let that sit up, um, at least for well, until yeah, dinner time next few hours. And once we're done with that, I'll get them shaped up, and we can start working on fitting up the top. And then I still have to shape the bottom bout. Okay. Well, I'll see you then just started gluing the upper bout here um done it all in one piece have it clamped up here um so yeah the i i well i guess i didn't even mention did i i got these glued in but uh when i cleaned them up they weren't too good this one is uh, shit still but a little bit better than some of the other ones here um this is probably the most atrocious one. It might as well just be a straight cutoff. And, uh, this might be the better one of the four. And I actually had to super glue a little bit of it together down here because it was uh, coming apart. And, you know, I realized that if I want to get this done uh, at all, I'm going to have to make some compromises. I'm not trying to make whoop, a perfect violin. I am just trying to make a violin. Um, I try to get as many of these out as possible, but with the bending rig I have, I only have this small radius in this flat section here, so it can just be very difficult, and I try to clean this down, and I've been using distilled water, but... And then I try to bend the lower bout and just ended up ripping it, so... <laughs> That's uh, not exactly what we want. So I think, you know, I, I was doing it in one piece anyways, which is kind of brain dead. So we'll cut it down. We'll get half out of this. And um, there's still uh, more rib material here that I'll use for uh, the rest of it. But, all right, that's where we're at now. Um... It'll be yeah, another week before I get to uh, finish working on this, but, you know, I have school, I gotta do that, and, uh, you know, we'll get our priorities right. So, anyways, I will see you uh, next week, then, whenever I have this lower bout ready to go. All right, it's been a full semester, but I am back at the violin here, um, trying to close up this gap. I just wet it down to try to uh, reactivate, not maybe not reactivate some of the hide glue, but get it primed because I'm going to uh, 
heat it up on this, and I'm going to put some new hide, more hide glue in there. I'm going to press this against that, hopefully reform it. Also, we have this big gap here, um, almost like two millimeters, especially right here. Um, we're going to try to force that closed, and we'll, we'll clamp it up here, and that'll be hopefully, hopefully enough. We'll, well, we'll find out, I guess. All right, I just flattened up the uh, belly plate here. Um, just took a plane to it for a little bit. Um, I just need it to be flat enough for me to uh, transfer the uh, uh, outline of the uh, actual top plate onto it. Um, and so it's good here. A uh, nice flat surface, and this will also be a reference so I know uh, how thick it is. I didn't take off a lot. That and a little bit over here. These were a little bit too two chunky curls, uh, that's why I'd stopped it. Um, anyways, I got this, this is glued on here, that's nice. Uh, I tried fixing up this gap here, and it, uh, it just kind of opened itself back up. I might try again though, and just directly clamp this without having the, um, the marker here. Um, this isn't the right one by the way, but it doesn't matter. Um, I might just try directly putting a clamp here, or maybe even, I have some clothes pins, and you really need to pinch it, like right here. Um, the bottom is fine, by the way. Um, uh, regardless, over here, I bent up the last uh, of the bottom piece, um, so I'll have to cut these off and make sure they line up nicely, or maybe I'll put like a, what would you call, a little like dovetail-esque piece to fit in a little V-slot. Um, if I don't manage to get that perfect, but it'll sit nice. Um, I have it clamped. It's not glued. Um, you can see it had cracked. The, it cracked right where it's going to connect to the corner block. Um, and I have a little bit more cherry if I really wanted to. I have a whole bunch more even. Um, but I really don't think that it's worth it. It's going to, sure, it's cracked a little bit, but it's cracked right where it's going to glue up. There's no cracks um, outside of that, so it's going to be secured to the corner block. I, I just don't think it's worth it. Um, the rest of these seams, this is not too nice. Oh, again, up at the top here, um, it's separated. Not nearly as bad on this one, um, but I'll have to see what I can do to make that pretty. And we'll lose um, a good bit of this top, probably down to that crack right there. Um, is how much we'll lose. Uh, and you know what? Ultimately, if it ends up a little bit um, thinner than a violin should, oh well. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, it's going to be what it is. So, anyways, I'm going to probably get ready to glue this. I was waiting for it to dry so it would set into its shape more. Um, still a little bit wet over here. But after that, oh, it's actually slightly cracked there. Uh, that'll probably be fine. I might... This piece was a little bit too thick. Um, but I left it thick because this piece is also too thick. Um, it, it's like half... Not even half a millimeter, like 0.3 um, too high. Uh, so I kind of had to match it so that they'd match up where they meet down at the bottom here. So, oh well. I'll get it fixed up and glued. And then I might bring you back when I... I'm getting this lined up, or maybe after it's all glued up. Either one. We'll see you then. Alright, we have this glued up here on the bottom. However, there's a slight gap, barely a millimeter, but I'm probably going to end up cutting out a little bit of it and putting in another insert, probably cherry or maybe some ipe or something else. But regardless, I have this weird clamping situation, but because there's that gap, there's a lot of squeeze out, and I'm worried, well, it will get glued this plywood piece will end up getting glued to the sides if I, I don't do something here. Uh, so it's been sitting a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to take off the clamps and just slide it out, clean it up, and then clamp it back. Uh, hopefully that works. And then we'll have almost the completed thing. We just got to trim it down. I don't know. Maybe that adds a little bit of flair. Huh? Anyone want to try leaving that in? Oh, that would not look good. All right. Yep. We'll get this uh, cleaned up and clamped up again. Would you look at that? If you were lacking a pair of eyes, you'd almost say it looks good. Um, 
really botched the, uh, oh, that just happens to be the best seam there. You'll notice that it's not as it should be. Um, I didn't leave enough of a taper on the C-bouts, so I had to improvise a joint that would uh, still work. So they all connect over, well, this looks a lot better on camera. Holy crap, maybe, yeah, look at how nasty that one is. Um, I'm going to have to add in some wood filler. I can't really avoid that. The other ones aren't too bad. This one's also pretty terrible, and it's cracked at the bottom. Um, that's going to need more wood filler than I'd like. Um, I'd like none, so uh, way more than I'd like. But anyways, it's pretty much done. Um, this corner block uh, came loose here. Um, probably when I was trying to repair this, I ended up knocking that loose. And I did notice that when I did it, so I know that's where it came from. Um, so I'm warming up the hide glue again, uh, and I'll resecure it, and then hopefully that's the last time I have to use the hide glue for a while now. Um, because after that, actually, wait, I lied. I have to do the linings. Um, although I'll have to sand this down. So I have some sandpaper attached ooh, on the back of this giant block here. Um, and so I'll sand this down, uh, get rid of this extra height. Um, I won't bring these down to their final height because I want to sand on the back side whenever I flip the mold around. Oh, I also, I don't know if I, uh, I talked about this after I took the uh, clamps off. Yeah, we have a gap there, but I'll cut that out and I'll have to glue in some replacements. So yeah, I guess I'm really not done with the hide glue. You can see there's a crack there. I was hoping it'd be less visible. Um, that crack is actually less visible to the eye, but uh, it might come out whenever we're um, scraping, because I still have to scrape the sides. You can see they're pretty messed up from, they. I got them more wet than they should have been. Um, so they the grain got raised on them. Fortunately, this is a few inclusions, but I, I didn't really have any good, ch this was the best piece of cherry I had left, unfortunately. It gives it character. That's what we're talking about, character. Um, so, sanding on the top, I can then trace it out on the back of this, um, cut that out, glue the linings, and make a repair for this. I might see if I can get a sliver of ipe, uh, you know, make it different, make it look intentional. Like, I wanted it to be a different type of wood to, you know, really stand out, give it, give it a punch, yeah. That's it. Big brain. Big brain play there. All right. I'm going to do that, uh, although I might call it quits for the night, um, although my days don't really matter to you guys. So I'll see you when something's happened. I'm at wit's end with scraping. Um, there's a little bit of glue spots still left there. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is take these sides down to the height of the corner and end blocks. Uh, which is not their final height, but just to get it uniform. And then I'll glue the linings in, which I have cut over here. It might look like it, but it's not gluing up. I just have it set up here so that uh, they'll fit to form whenever they uh, cool down here. This is the, the linings, of course. Um, I managed to break a couple. This one had a natural... Um, oh, if it focuses, probably won't, but there you go. Um, it had a natural split in the wood, um, so that didn't surprise me too much. The other one I was just being a little bit too aggressive with. My, my technique was off. I've gotten a lot better at this as I've gone on. You can see the crack Ooh. in center frame if it, there we go. Um, this isn't huge, but I have to cut a new one. Um, got plenty of material. Uh, I'm just using the sides I had, the raw sides, which I had at like just under two millimeters, so that's good enough. Um, and this this wasn't going to make good siding anyways in the future. Uh, this is it cut down, but you look at that like kind of knot like thing there. It's it's not too pretty. Um, so I decided, yeah, I'll cut it down uh, and I'll just use it for the linings. Because uh, there's no reason for me to go out and get something like willow for the, the sides. It, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. So, um, yeah, these are setting up, and hopefully they'll set into place. This, These two bottom bouts, I, I was able to get 
very nicely. I might attempt to redo the C box. It's really these clothespins holding it in place, um, as opposed to its actual just natural form. And this top bout's also pretty good here. So, all right, I'm gonna get to that. Then I can glue it up, and I don't have anything else to do other than well, I guess I'll sand it down level. But then I really gotta transfer the uh, transfer it onto the the top and the back, and. We just have to move along with it. It's kind of crazy. I'm forced into that, but I mean, that's what needs to happen. That's what's got to happen then. All right. Well, there she is, all clamped up. Clamped as in clothes pinned up. But, uh, well, these actually aren't glued yet. Uh, they're still uh, steamed, so I want them to fit to the form for a little bit longer. But I'll glue those after dinner. Everything else is gluing up now. Um,. And this is the linings, of course, so almost there. Well, there she is with the linings glued on. Now, I know I don't have a mortise for these linings, but I honestly could not be bothered. Uh, I see no reason for it. The sea bouts are the least clean of them all, especially this one, that's the worst. But the other ones, I think, are turned out rather nicely. Uh, that one, maybe not so much, but look at that. Nice butted up against the end block there, butt it up against the uh, corner block there. Yeah, just the C-bouts really that are a little bit messy, but I can live with that for something that no one is really going to see other than me. Um, it's starting to look really legit. Uh, I'm happy. At this point, uh, there's no procrastinating, no lollygagging. We gotta move on to the plates. So this will be the... Um, back plate up here and then on the flip side which is not leveled um, will be where the front plate goes so I'll lay this down on the front plate trace it out like this flip it around and trace ooh, flip it around trace it out on the back plate like this All right, everyone, just wanted to finish off this video here with a little narration. Sorry I uh, didn't get to do any live commentary, didn't have the opportunity for this. So, we got the linings done. The garland is in a state where we still have to get the linings on the flip side, but we want to get the plates on first. So there they are, look at them, the spruce and the cherry. It's been a while since I've looked at this. Um, I'm editing this, uh, an episode uh, in advance, and... Let me tell you, we make some good progress on it. So thanks for watching. Be sure to tune into the next one. Um, I definitely appreciate anyone who checks this out. So if you have the time, share it. Subscribe if you want. And I hope to see you in the next one.